Hi. OAuth is an open standard that allows users to share their private resources, for example photos, videos, or contact lists, stored on one site with another site without having to hand out their username and password. With adoption by Facebook, Google, Twitter, and Yahoo, OAuth is quickly becoming a widely adopted standard. In this series of screencasts, we'll walk you through the basics of how OAuth works. Let's start with why it's important. So here's a picture you all understand. Mary has accounts at Acme Bank and uses online banking to perform activities such as balance checks, transfers, and bill pays. Acme stores her credentials in order to authenticate her access to, her, to their online functions. But now it's 2010 and it's a slightly more complex picture. Mary has multiple online bank accounts from multiple financial service providers. She has a hard time keeping track of her money and has decided to use Parsley.com, a new online personal finance organizer. Parsley has arrangements with various banks, allowing users to add their accounts at those banks to their Parsley.com portfolio. This will give Mary a consolidated view of her finances. For this to work, uh, one of the problems to be sorted is how exactly how Parsley.com will access Mary's accounts at Acme Bank on her behalf. You might think, as shown here, that Parsley.com could just ask her for her Acme Bank username and password, store them in their own data store, and use them as needed. And this would work. However, there are a few flaws in this strategy. Uh, first, from Mary's perspective, uh, she shouldn't be so willing to hand out her password. The more places her passwords live, the greater the chances of it being compromised. Also, her Acme credentials have a lot of power, including transfers and bill pay, and Parsley.com should not have access to that power when all it needs to check is a balance and pull some transaction records. Uh, this proliferation of passwords is bad business for Parsley and Acme as well, because smart users will not trust their data to services willing to be so free and easy with their sensitive customer information. So we need another means of Parsley.com accessing Mary's data at Acme Bank. What OAuth 2.0 suggests is a system whereby Mary grants limited access for Parsley to access her data, and this grant takes the form of an access token that will be known only to Parsley and Acme and can only be used to, uh, for limited access to Mary's data. So when Parsley needs to check on Mary's accounts, it simply sends the token along rather than a username or a password. Acme recognizes the token and sends Mary's data back to Parsley. So this is a simplified take on the end result, but adequate in terms of explaining why such a system of tokens is preferable over sharing usernames and passwords. We've not yet dug into any of the particulars of OAuth. We'll do that in the next couple of screencasts. But at this point, Know that OAuth is quickly becoming the standard for this type of token-based authentication and authorization on the Internet. Future screencasts will cover uh, how Acme Bank and Parsley.com establish trust, how Mary grants privileges to Parsley.com herself and in her own browser without ever allowing Parsley access to her credentials. In some ways, this piece is the heart of OAuth, defining the flows whereby users can ac uh, establish access tokens in a safe fashion and grant them themselves. How par and then finally, how Parsley.com uses that token to make requests uh, and how Mary can revoke access if she decides to stop using Parsley.com.